Welcome back to another installment of Space This Week. Over the past seven days, we saw the grand return to flight of the legendary Falcon 9 and an incredible slow motion view of Flight 5 Starship's six Raptor engines during a static fire, Dragon splashdowns will return to the west coast, the Space Olympics began, Starliner's eight-day mission approaches its eighth week, Artemis 2's SLS arrived in Florida, and much, much more. Enjoy. Ship 30, the Starship slated for the fifth integrated flight test of the world's biggest and most powerful rocket, was recently moved to the Macy's test site aboard the mobile static fire test pad. Originally, the Starship upper stage performed static fire tests on the former suborbital launch pad site, but with work well underway on Launch Complex 2, SpaceX has moved these tests to Macy's. Hey, you know, before we get to the Ship 30 test, how about that second launch site? The stack and catch tower has been springing up at an incredible pace, and last week it grew again with the stacking of module number four, making this tower really start standing out on the Starbase skyline. Next up will be module five, which should be stacked very soon. It's already been delivered to the construction site at pad two for imminent lifting. Anyway, back to Ship 30. Last Friday, we saw the static fire take place. NASA spaceflight captured this great view of the vehicle, with all the exhaust being vented off to the side, rather than in a 360 degree direction around the stand, thanks to the fact that the static fire pad at Macy's has a flame trench to direct the exhaust. While this shot is great and all, SpaceX later released a truly unique view of the test, filmed underneath the vehicle in slow motion. I can't get enough of this footage, seeing the three vacuum Raptor engines ignite first, and then, about a minute into the slow-mo footage, the central three sea-level Raptor engines blast away too. I really hope SpaceX continues surprising us with more really interesting perspectives of vehicles during testing, though this one is definitely going to be hard to top. So, with this successful test under SpaceX's belt, and of course with successful static fire of the first stage on the 15th of July, when can we expect Flight 5 to take place? Well, yesterday Elon appeared on stream at the X Takeover Live presentation, where he stated that Starship itself will likely be ready to fly in the next two or three weeks, but is mindful that with the wait time required for an FAA license to be granted, a date in late August or September can be expected. The standpoint of when Starship would be ready, it's probably is about two or three weeks, but uh, then, then depends on when we get the FAA license. So it's probably end of August is my guess, earliest, um, and it may go to early September, just depends on, on how fast the FAA grants our license. As for future Starship vehicles, we saw progress with two of them. For starters, we saw the delivery of a sea-level Raptor engine and two vacuum Raptor engines being moved towards Mega Bay 2 on the 22nd of July, likely to be integrated onto Ship 31. Just four days later, we then saw Ship 31 lifted onto a transport stand with all of its engines apparently installed, once again showcasing SpaceX's extremely quick turnaround time for ship construction. We then saw it moved to the high bay under the cover of darkness to potentially start the lengthy heat shield replacement process if it sports the same outdated design that Ship 30 used to have. Jack Bayer from NASA Spaceflight also caught a view of Ship 33, which is the first version 2 Starship, currently sitting partially stacked in the high bay. It was then moved to Mega Bay 2 to begin stacking onto its aft section. Speaking of which, the V2 test article that we saw moved to Macy's 10 days ago was spotted undergoing cryoload testing last week, hopefully achieving SpaceX's desired outcomes. Not long after this, we saw the rollback of Ship 30 from Macy's back to the production site where it was stored inside Mega Bay 2, briefly. As night fell, it was moved once again, this time to the Sanchez site and the Rocket Garden, where it will presumably now remain until ready for integration with the booster. Now, it's been a hot minute since I've been able to talk about Falcon 9 launch, as the vehicle was grounded by the FAA following a second stage failure on the 12th of July Starlink launch, which saw the upper stage of the rocket suffer from a liquid oxygen leak, preventing second stage ignition, causing all Starlink satellites to be left in too low an orbit to be saved, and were fated to burn up on Earth re-entry. SpaceX released a statement last week outlining that the leak was due to a crack in a pressure sensor line caused by engine vibrations and a loose clamp, and to ensure this doesn't happen again, Again, in the near-term Falcon missions, the failed sense line and sensor will be removed as they are non-essential for flight safety and can be covered by alternate sensors already present on the engine. 
This design change has been tested with FAA oversight, and SpaceX has now been given approval to restart Falcon launches. And they wasted no time doing so. In the days that followed return to flight approval, we saw three launches across a mere 30 hour time span, across Saturday and Sunday. These were all Starlink missions, and so were all basically identical in mission profile. All three of Falcon's pads were used, with the first Falcon launching from Kennedy 39A, the second from Cape Canaveral Launch Complex 40, and the third from Vandenberg Launch Complex 4E. All three missions were a success this time, together growing the Starlink constellation by 67 satellites in total, and all three Falcon 9 first stage boosters made successful landings on the drone ships. One significant achievement made last week was that the first launch on the 28th of July was SpaceX's 300th reflight of a booster. While we only saw Starlink being launched last week, one of the things Falcon 9 can carry is Dragon, both crew and cargo variants. To date, SpaceX has supported the International Space Station with 45 Dragon missions since its first flight in 2010, and the first 21 of these saw the spacecraft splash down off America's west coast. Now, some background info. Dragon has two parts, the pressurized section for crew and an unpressurized trunk section for hardware. Initially, the trunk was jettisoned after Dragon performed its deorbit burn to ensure it safely splashed down in the unpopulated Pacific Ocean. After the first 21 flights though, SpaceX moved Dragon splash down to the east coast, so the spacecraft landed close to Cape Canaveral and to allow faster recovery and refurbishment operations. And one crucial difference made to the mission profile was that the Dragon's trunk would be jettisoned before the deorbit burn allowing it to passively re-enter and break up in the atmosphere in the days to months that followed. Because the trunk has no ability to manoeuvre itself, re-entry was uncontrolled and it was impossible to predict where the trunk would re-enter. This wasn't deemed an issue as analysis by SpaceX and NASA determined that the trunk would burn up completely and leave no debris. However, in 2022, debris from a trunk was found in Australia, indicating that it didn't fully burn up as expected. And in the past six months, there have been three further cases where trunk debris has been discovered on land, though luckily no damage or injury was caused by these. In order to maintain safety, SpaceX will now revert back to what they were doing originally with Dragon, returning to West Coast recoveries, so jettisoning trunks after the deorbit burn, so that if it's not fully destroyed, it'll re-enter on a known trajectory, safely splashing down downrange of Dragon off the coast of California. The Olympic Games have begun, and to celebrate, the crew aboard the International Space Station created their own version of the Games, displaying some genuinely impressive athletic feats, of course with some huge help from the microgravity environment. We saw some weightlifting, with men as the weights, a laser accurate shot put throw through the station, a discus hurl, and some very impressive gymnastics from Sonny Williams? Wait, weren't she and Butch only supposed to be on the station for eight days when they launched eight weeks ago, and there's still no plan for when they'll be coming home. NASA maintains the stance that Starliner is still only go for a turn in the event of an emergency, and they aren't ready to okay non-emergency return just yet. Here on Earth, engineers recently completed tests of Starliner's propulsion system at the White Sands Test Facility to try and understand why its thrusters malfunctioned, with analysis of the data still being completed. Right now, the timeline is hopefully a return in August, and the clock is ticking. NASA has rated Starliner for only 90 days in orbit, and it's going to hit that 90 day mark on the 5th of September, so ideally it needs to return before then. Last week, I covered the massive SLS rocket core stage for Artemis 2, beginning its 900 mile journey from the Mishu assembly facility to the Kennedy Space Center aboard the Pegasus barge, for final assembly in the vehicle assembly building. Well, it's now arrived, as you could probably tell from the video on screen. It was fully offloaded from Pegasus and carefully transported to the vehicle assembly building, where it will stay until the fully constructed rocket is rolled out for pad testing. Exciting times ahead. It was my birthday last week, and so I was away, and therefore, Lion Aerospace had a week off from flights. So, I don't know what footage is on screen right now. Maybe some old KSP video from a few years ago? Who knows? What I do know is that on the left are all the legends who support what I do here, and make all of these videos possible. So, major thanks to all of you on there. And of course, thank you to everyone else who's still here and watching. If you enjoyed the video, then hit the like button and subscribe if you want to as well. I'll see you in the next video, which should be a return to KSP this Saturday. Uh... Goodbye.